Tapaloho began in a very humble way, the experience of working in extremely poor situations, shack settlements and villages, and coming to terms with the growing HIV infection rate since 1992. The tremendous challenge this would be to us as people of faith and as people who wanted to respond to this reality. We had a dream and I think a spirit within us which we wanted to translate into programs, a spirit of profound reverence and care for the poor and vulnerable of our society so that they could feel safe, loved, protected, and be able to choose life and live positively, accompanied by professionalism in the programs that we would administer to respond to all their needs. As communities, we had to respond to the total need of people facing this pandemic by building programs which would be run by people from the communities, never judging people, to meet them with profound reverence that we walk on sacred ground when we are with the poorest and most vulnerable in society. So we started with the home care nursing program. Women and men from the communities trained in nursing care in their homes, the homes of the sick and the affected families, and also in counselling skills to be able to walk with these people, give them relevant advice, lead them to choose life and be able to cope with their illness, their suffering, their problems in as positive a way as possible. That was the first major program in Freedom Park and now with 11 teams we are running this as deeply and as professionally as we can. From there we moved to the antiretroviral program in 2004 with the possibility of big funding coming from overseas and so we set up a separate program bringing eight antiretroviral clinics to the home care nursing stations in the villages and shack settlements where we already had well-run antiretroviral and home care teams. That was the ideal, that we would have a home care team to support the antiretroviral teams of professional nurses, doctor and assistant nurses, so that in these eight clinics the people would have a chance of coming back from death's door and living as normal a life as possible. We now have 500 children and adults on this program. That was followed by the opening of our hospice inpatient unit. Miss Modiri, and how are you today? Uh, a dream that we had for years because watching people die in horrendous conditions was an intense pain to all of us. So the dream was to have a simple, well-designed, homely building in which we could bring the poorest of the poor to receive professional care, pain control, disease control, so that they could really die in peace and dignity surrounded by a loving community. That has been a dream come true with the remarkable team who bring all this great professionalism as well as deep love and care to the terminal moments and help also people on the road to recovery and to antiretrovirals. <laughs> And finally, our program for orphan and vulnerable children, which was the logical fourth step, because one of the most difficult issues we are facing in this AIDS pandemic is the vulnerable children and orphans who are left behind. And so we set up a program which would be the equivalent of a home care program, child care nurses trained by an NGO to care for children in the homes supervised by social workers, 
so that the court cases, the applications for grants could be handled. We now have 400 kiddies in this very difficult program. We hope that these children can grow and live a normal life. All this is enabled to function by a well-trained team of administrators who do all the statistics, the, pr the program narratives, the funding proposals, and so on, keeping the ship running with administration. And finally, we have a Caring for Our Carers program where we look after our wonderful people through psychological counseling and spiritual help so that they can be healed in the very difficult ministry and work they do. Oh, my God.